Hey. Bonjour, hello, hi. Bonjour, hello, hi, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this session number four. It's the last one. Uh, Tom, uh, first, Tom uh, is playing tonight at 10 p.m. at the Reflector. Uh, you've got the address in your press map. Um, DJ? DJ set. DJ set. Uh, you need to be there. Uh, there's no ticket. Uh, there's no pass. You're on the guest list. Uh, there will be friends. There will be drinks. There will be good music for good people. So I hope to see you there at 10 p.m. Uh, so tonight, Tom plays his own name uh, as DJ set. Uh, this weekend uh, is in the middle of the European tour with Deus. Uh, you play at the Cactus in Bruges and... Um, down the rabbit hole in France, uh, in uh, Holland, sorry. And then Italy. And then Rome on Tuesday, yeah. And in September, Tom will release the third album of Taxi Wars. Uh, it's jazz side project, a jazz project you created with uh, Robin Varian. He's a Belgian saxophonist uh, player. Uh, there will be a tour with Taxi Wars. Yes. And then uh, maybe a second movie as a director. And then, we hope so, a new Deus album. That's the idea. Okay, it's a piece of music, it's a piece of work, it's a piece of freedom. And this talk, 20 minutes talk, is just around one ID, main ID, uh, the more freedom you have as an artist, uh, the most creative you are. Do you agree, Tom? No. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> um, well, it depends how you... No, of course I agree, but um, it depends on where you uh, place the freedom. Is the freedom... Does the freedom come from the people who give you money to make your record? Yes. Um, does the freedom come from your band members? Yes. But sometimes uh, it can be good to be limited in that freedom as a creating artist. So I try to answer as, uh, as uh, uh, detailed possible. Uh, I think freedom is, is definitely something that is needed, but it's also very relative and it depends on from what side it comes. I think it must be hard for a young band now to be um, really have to perform straight away, have a hit single, have to be, you know, uh, 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 remarked straight away and does have does not have the same kind of um, uh, you know time to develop and time to find themselves. Um, so in a sense, <coughs> I think the the, the the young musicians now are m much more limited in freedom that that uh, that we used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's it's like um, I don't want to be smart. Uh, I don't no, want no. to be cheeky. Mm -hmm. But so uh, it, it's relative, basically, what the freedom serves for. If you don't mind, let's go back to the mid '80s, Tom. Uh, you are a teenager. You are a student. Is it your dream to become a musician at no. this time? No, because I'm in the mid '80s, I didn't even play guitar yet. I was still in school, and uh, I was dreaming of being a film director. And that was the first thing I wanted. I was 15 years old and I asked my mother uh, if I could go and study it uh, after school. And she said, sure. And so um, that was the first thing I wanted to do, which uh, and then I studied in Brussels, in St. Lucas. I did uh, um, uh, l'école uh, de, de réalisateur, quoi. Um, and, uh, but then I was also working with my band and, and, I, and I, got, I cheated on an exam of, uh, of chemistry in school and they, they threw me out of school because I, I copied the, 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 the book in small and I had it on my lap because I thought, who needs fucking, do who, who needs chemistry when you want to make films? Mm. Um, but, um, and then they chucked me out of school and then the b I was lucky that the band started to uh, really explode in the beginning of the 90s. Uh, we did uh, a small Wallonian label signed us, uh, uh, Bang Records. They put us on a showcase in London with uh, Girls Against Boys. And Girls Against Boys was supposed to be the new Nirvana. So all the eyes were on them. You know, Nirvana just boomed. Alternative music was on the radio every day. You know, life was good. Um, <laughs> And, um, and GVSB, Girls Against Boys, they were going to be the, the new Nirvana. So all the record companies in the world were present in London to see um, them. 
but then we were playing before, and then they wanted to sign us. And so uh, this was the moment where it started, and we signed to Island Records in 94. Yeah. And so then I had to put my dreams of making a movie on the second mm. plan, and, and just uh, which of course was a was not a big problem because being in a touring band is, is a so lot of fun. So 94, first album of Deus, work is scenario, and as Tom says, in Belgium it was a small independent label, bank, Europe and the world, Island Records. Yes, it was not a major, but Island maybe Records one of the most important. Island Records is a major. Label. Is uh, was it a big step for you? Of course, it was huge, mm. but we, but, but you know, we didn't, we were A, too young to really register what was happening, and also uh, the 90s, you have to, you know, the 90s were, I think, uh, and I'm saying this in an, uh, as un-nostalgic as I, I could possibly can, but it was like the last golden era of what we now know as the music industry. Um, there was really um, a lot of energy going on. There was a lot of music. There was no digital, uh, you know, uh, uh, copying yet. There was not uh, Napster wasn't even born yet, you know. So, so we're talking about there's a lot of money going around, around and a lot of good energy going around to sign young bands. My joke was always if you, in the 90s you didn't get signed to a label was because you weren't playing in a band. Mm. They were signing everybody almost. You know, it was like but. But then as soon as, you know, you had to have something, of course, you had to, mm -hmm. uh, to bring something to the table. But was it a big step? It was huge because we were also the first, you know, in, the, in, this, in this period, you have to know also that um, when you went to Glastonbury, you went to Reading festivals, you know, festivals that luckily are still going strong, you know, you would hear American bands, you would see English bands. That's it. There would be one maybe Scandinavian and then maybe one German and that's it. All the rest would be Anglo-Saxon, American or uh, English or Australian, so do we, we we got placed in the middle of this, which was huge for us, you know, which was great and it made us really proud because mm -hmm. we were from this little country, you know. So of course it was a big step. Uh, you you talk about the nineties. Uh, you remember maybe not. Uh, there were there were CDs, there were MTV, maybe Sony Walkman. Uh, today, how do you deal with all the social networks? There are tools for you that... Well, uh, I have a simple answer. I don't deal with it <laughs> at all. Okay. <laughs> because um, when, I t when I talked to the guys of my band and I said, because we were rehearsing yesterday, we were in the studio, and I said I'm going to be speaking on this, uh, you know, networking festival talking maybe about technology. Yeah, I mean, no, they were on the fucking floor because, you know, they go like, what the hell are you going to do there? <laughs> um, and they're right, you know, I am completely, <coughs> you know, not uh, doing all this stuff. And also the way that I work to write my songs is on an 8-track recorder. And um, uh, I, of course, I am aware of this technology and I love it and I use it, but always with somebody else in the driver's seat, which I think is a luxury because then I can listen instead of, you know, working, do, doing the actual work. I can listen and I can think, which is very important for music. Um, so, but I'm I'm kind of I'm 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 you know I'm I'm a dinosaur uh, when it comes to social media, and uh, I am not on it. I think it would not make my life happier. I don't think my life. I think my life is pretty good without it. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a hard time in 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 tr getting it involved in the music that I'm making, knowing well that there is a danger there. Luckily, we have a management where young people take care of that stuff. But of course, you have to have a personal impact too, mm -hmm. which I am now in the midst of trying to investigate how I can do this. And I would <laughs> like to also stress the fact that I am the only one in the band who's like this. All the rest, you know, they have their Facebook and their, you know, Instagram, <laughs> and, and they're really pretty savvy on computers. One question about the management. Since the beginning, you work with the same manager, Christian Pierre, yes. and the same small structure, musicness. Yes. How much important was it for you to meet the right people at the right moment? Well, uh, we're, we're together now for 26 years, so sometimes I don't feel it's the right people. You know, <laughs> it's like a relationship. It's like, you know, you go, you're married, and then you think, sometimes you think this is perfect, and sometimes you think, who the fuck are you? You know, so. Um, <coughs> But how, how important was it? You know, very much, but, 
but it's 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 important to be well surrounded and uh, and to, go, to get back to your first question i think our management was very artist um, focused they were very artist oriented which is i don't know i can't see the audience here if there's young musicians here but you know th that's an important thing to have if you have if people surround you it's it's people who have to first and foremost you know respect no no respect is not the word who have to you know take into account the fact that you you have to make stuff and you yeah, have to create but they stuff. don't have too much artist no but i mean they're getting bigger also yeah. which which can create sometimes a, l a little bit of stress also uh, they're getting bigger because that seems to be you know the natural way of the world that everything has to grow um to which I'm not uh, always, uh, you know, I don't agree to either. Mm. Because a cancer grows too, mm. and that's not a good kind of growth. So, um, um, you know, but it's, we've been working together for 26 years, and that's a long time, it's true, in this business. So you get to know each other really well. So I, I would say that's an advantage, yes, mm. definitely. W what's the most important lesson or the best advice you receive from your manager? Sorry, what's the? The best lesson you've learned from your manager, if there is one. Answer <laughs> your emails, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> you didn't answer to my emails. No, <laughs> did you send me email? Really? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Um, that, that's the best <laughs> lesson, to which, yeah. Um, no, I mean, that, that that's a question. It's like, a, a, you know, I'm not very good at anecdote questions. Uh, I can't really think of something. But it's, you know, on another level, it's it's just incredibly touching you know that you that in this business which you know you've seen successes you've seen flops you've seen so many good times so many bad times that you know that you can still uh, find 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 the strength to work together and to and to to grow together to be better together so i i respect him a lot for sticking around in in difficult times and i respect him a lot for being very elegant in in very good times mm. which is also not easy you know uh, success is also hard <laughs> mm. um so uh, 10 years ago, uh, you built your own studio in Antwerp, Vantage Point Studio. Yes. Uh, does it change something for your creating process? Um, I think it was Neil Young who said, never build a studio in the place where you live uh, because you will end up not doing anything else. It also takes away the magic. So basically, I don't live there, but it's really close by. You know, it's a good investment. A lot of bands come and record there. Uh, but after now 10 years and four records there, I'm sick of it. So I want to go somewhere else. But that's not an answer. To make <laughs> your albums. <laughs> yeah, to make uh, the new Deus <laughs> album. Mm. Um, but um, no, it's 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 great. It's, it, you know, it's 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 great if you can afford mm. it. Because, but on the other hand, we're mm. we're 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 putting, of course, the real studios. Like you know, you still have a couple of legendary ones in Brussels, mm. like Jet and and ICP. 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 Because you that's did the Taxi Wars album at ICP. Yes, no? we yeah. always end up also in in the real ones. You know. Um, uh, because that's also what I read a lot. I read a lot that, you know, young musicians, uh, uh, that they say, oh, those beautiful studios, they're all going. And, and my answer is always, well, the only reason to keep them alive is to book them. But of course, the budgets are much tighter now, if there is a budget to make a record. But of course, the way to get that, uh, to get that patrimonium to keep it alive, the, the great studios, is to book them and to go there. And that's what I was saying, there is a magic to them, and there's a reason why they're built that way, and there are your favorite bands who recorded there, and there's the engineer who's worked on one of the albums of The Cure that you love, and all that kind of, all those kind of things, you know, I, w I was talking on the terrace about somebody who's like in artificial intelligence, and they're, you know, obviously, you have the hologram shows, and then you have now uh, uh, devices or, you know, software to, to write music, and that's all well, and it's easy to then go, you know, but I mean, what are you, what are you gonna gain by this? You know, Th there, is, there is a reason that some things were around for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. The human factor, um, without wanting to sound, uh, you know, old fashioned again, I keep on apologizing for this, but I shouldn't, but the human factor is so much more important. And studios are part of that. Those are places with a history. Those are places with a legacy. And those are places where shit happened. You know, mm -hmm. good shit, the good stuff. So, you know, I'm a fan. Mm. Uh, two more stupid questions. Tom, uh, do you make music today for the same reason you did the first album of Deus? 
I don't remember the reason for the first album. Uh, and I what mean, are the is there reasons? A reason? no. Is there a reason even? It's a question of life or... I don't know. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. And it is still fun today. Oh, yeah. 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 It's more fun because you know more what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you know more how to create an atmosphere where you can, you know, deliberately fuck up and to see where you end up. I think it's much more fun. Of course, once the album's finished and, you know, you have this media thing that starts to happen, that's another story. And the way that people are gonna, you know, and also when you're a band with eight records, you know, you're gonna create a kind of an expectancy and people are gonna be disappointed or they love it or they hate it. That's not, you know, that's not always fun. But the making itself is, is a joy. So mm. it's the like- The creating process. Oh yeah. Mean. Okay. And it's the reason you do it. Tonight you play as a DJ, you, you play jazz with uh, Taxi Wars, you play rock and pop with Deus. Is it the same Tom Barman? Is it the same personality? Is it the same responsibility? Or do you see a difference? Um, uh, no, I just think, yeah, it's, I mean, I mean it's, it's some, you know, you, you have artists who reinvent themselves in the sense where they, where they uh, just uh, change their persona or something. I just take the same old guy in to different contexts. That's my way of invent reinventing myself. But I, I think it's always the same one. But I just push myself to something that I think that's really nothing for me. I'm not able gonna to pull that off. And then sometimes I don't, which is disappointing. And sometimes I do, which is great. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, but it's basically, I think, uh, you know, me. <laughs> What will be the next step for you? <coughs> Uh, the next step will be um, the next step will be a new Deus record and finishing this movie I've been working on for five years. So that's the most important. And Taxi Wars album is finished and comes out in September. Okay. And we're gonna tour that. Two months now. Yeah. Two or three months. Europe. Yeah. Okay. And my last question: uh, What's your answer when people say rock music is dead? Hip hop is the new pop. Oh, but I love. Do you agree? Oh well, sometimes I do. It depends what kind of rock music you listen to. But I, I compare it to painting. They've de they've declared, uh, you know, uh, painting dead like a hundred times. But I think if something is really simple, it will always survive. And there's nothing more simple than a guitar, and a bass and a drums. But it'll go in phases. And maybe this is not the right phase. So maybe this is the right moment to make rock music because you shouldn't do what everybody else does, right? And everybody else does the other thing. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. See you tonight yes. at 10 p.m. at the Reflector. Thanks. Maybe are, you open are you open for questions? One or two questions? Yes, yes sure. Awesome. Does anybody have a question? Um, hi, Tom. Uh, I, I want to know uh, what would uh, you think it would happen if you didn't find uh, the manager and the team when, when you when you were growing as an artist. You think uh, you would be have success right now? Uh, that's the that's the, the uh, if you're together for 28 years, that's the big question. Or maybe we would have had more success. <laughs> <laughs> if we if we would have met somebody else or less or uh, I would have you know I would have gone down a completely different a, a wrong personal road if I wouldn't have met him because they they are they were it was two people in the beginning so um, that's the question but you keep I mean that's hypothetical I cannot answer that I can just only I can only look at at the road that's been taken and and, uh, you know, and, and respect the, the, the person who, who built that road with us and with me. So, uh, I don't know, that's anybody's guess. But it's important to find somebody who has some kind of a vision when you're that young, you know, when you're, t I was 19 or 20, you know, uh, okay, and you, 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 somewhere in the back of your mind, you know, okay, I'm pretty good, I guess, or 
this is okay, but you need that somebody that says, wait a minute, this is not just good, but this could be something. So you need that. I think kids maybe now are much more self-confident in that sense because they have so much more information about, you know, I, I think also on so social media that they, they stimulate each other much quicker. Whereas, you know, at the beginning of the 90s, you were a bit on your own. You were selling your cassette, you know, in a bar and then you would never meet the person again to who you sold it. <laughs> so, so you never know. But I think, I think you always have to be philosophical in that and see that is the road that's been taken. And, and you know, the fact 26 years just means something also, you know. It means that good, good things have happened too. Yeah, Tom, I have a question uh, in the age of streaming. You as an artist, um, do you like it or if not, what needs to be changed as an artist uh, to be like streaming that it be sustainable for you? Uh, is streaming, is that, is that, you mean like Spotify, the streaming of music and being able to listen or the streaming of shows? No, the uh, streaming of music like Spotify, etc. Yeah. Well, Spotify, I'm on it and, would you believe? <laughs> and um, I must say, it's, it, it, I just, uh, it makes me more conservative. In what kind of way? It makes me, it makes me go back to the stuff I already know. Strange. So, what do you think about monetizing? Monetizing it? Well, well, that's already too late. Somebody's already getting really rich there, right? So, I'm not gonna. My opinion's not gonna change it. I think, I think, I think, I think artists should should be paid more for that. You know, and I, I, I spoke differently 15 years ago. I was on a, I was on a. I was on a, a, a similar seminar and, and I must have been so irritating because the, everybody was telling me like, oh my God, Napster is gonna change music and it's gonna, and it's gonna be the end of it. And I was going like, yeah, you know, be philosophical about it, that's the way it is. Of course, 15 years later, you know, I'm still philosophical, but I'm also a little bit pissed off, <laughs> you know? So monetizing it, it's going into the wrong hands. I mean, that's clear. You are going to change it. Well, fantastic. Well, they're great. Thank you very much for doing that. I'll give you my number later. <laughs> yeah. Tom, as a movie director first and as a musician, uh, what are your preferred movie soundtracks? First question. Soundtracks? Yes. Blow Up. That's my favorite, I think. Blow Up. Yeah, uh, Antonioni. Uh, music by Herbie Hancock, I think. Yeah. I live, uh, I live here. Second question, what's your playlist tonight? I have no playlist. I completely improvise everything. Of course, that's how it should be. Freestyle. Yes, that's how it, I think, should be. So I have, like, I, I also DJ, I would like to say before, uh, before I, I, also, um, I also DJ with USB stick. So, um, which, is <laughs> which is great, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just nervous I'm going to lose it one day because it's so small. <laughs> Um, but uh, no, I improvise it. I have my, what, what is it, 6,000, 7,000 songs, and you know, I'll just see what the audience is. It's kind of early, so I hope that there'll be already some movement before. But I don't make a playlist when I DJ. I never would do that. Last question. So you mentioned album in September and tour. So Taxi Wars album, yes. Okay, yeah. so, so the tour is promoting the album or the album is promoting the tour? Uh, the, to the, the tour is, is trying to make some fucking money out of it. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and even that, it's a jazz band, you know. You know, that <laughs> I should have started, <laughs> you know, I should have started a fucking EDM band instead of a jazz band. But we're having so much fun, like I said, and, and it's, a small, it's a small tour, it's like you know, 25 uh, dates. So, uh, you know, but no, I d but the funny, it's funny you should ask, but because yes, a lot is changing. But also, when, whenever I, re I release a record, I go like, no, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm still talking to you for La Dernière Heure. I'm still, you know, I'm still going to the radio and say I have a new album out. I still go and play the shows and people say they like it or they don't like it. Still b b sell the merchandise or not, you know? So not that much has changed. Is the tour before or after the release of the album? Oh, it's after, of course. I mean, that would be a, a little bit strange. Well, maybe it's some avant-garde idea you're dropping here. 
Uh, no, I mean, I mean, I, I just saw the, the the Bob Dylan documentary by Scorsese, and it's so funny because in it he's playing a record that wasn't out yet, Desire. Desire, yeah. But that is a classic record. So you see these people going, you know, yawning and going, play something we know, which is very funny and very typical. What is the point of what I'm saying? People are people, and it's. Some things will just always stay the fucking same, whether there is artificial intelligence or holograms. You know, no, I, that's a bad example because that's <laughs> kind of scary. But you know, the point is, the point is, you know, we still do it the same way as in the 90s. Apart from that, the girls at the at the management now they ask me to give a feed to Twitter or to something or this or that. Apart from that, still do my interviews. Thanks a lot. I agree with a lot of what you said. I'm wondering if, uh, from uh, I respect your uh, fossil status as a dinosaur a lot, but I'm wondering if there is still something in the music tech scene that is exciting to you as an artist. In the music, what? In the music, te in technology, oh, in well innovation, yeah, I, exciting for you as an artist. Oh, everything about it. It's yeah. the most. It's 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 phenomenal. But I just don't want to be working on it because because I don't have the patience. To, to learn it, and I work with people who are geniuses at it. So, of course, that's also what mm -hmm. I said to you in the beginning. I mean, yeah, and the dinosaur thing is just a, you know, kind of a joke, but, but, but also true because, you know, but, but I love it. Uh, there are dangers in it, but that's always, you know, there's, there's like, you know, the, 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 the loop, the, the loop uh, factor and the fact that, um, uh, for example, you know, when you work on Pro Tools, you just do a uh, hundred takes and then choose the best one or make a comp, a comp. That doesn't really always help the concentration in the studio. And then you're, you're again at the human factor, which is, you know, there's, there's a, a specific atmosphere which really can, 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 can turn into magic. Computers don't always help with that. But they, once the magic's there, I, we, can't, we couldn't live without them, clearly. Yeah, there, there was one answer from Paul McCartney at this question, and he says, you can use all the tools you want, but the song, you need to write the song before. Yeah, and uh, like I always said, yeah, you could be really, really, um, uh, you can be really cutting edge with an acoustic guitar, and you can be very old-fashioned with the latest technology. So basically, it's what my squash teacher used to say. Well, I was no, I, I had kind of a temper when I, when I played squash as a kid. And um, I wanted to smash my racket against um, the, the wall because I made a mistake. And he stopped me right in time. You must have heard the story. <laughs> and he stopped me right in time. He said, it's not the racket, it's the boy. And that's a wise lesson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.